Hey guys, I'm Stu and welcome to another LumaFusion video tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to do image masks and what is an image mask I hear you ask. Well, I've got this clip of a time lapse outside the Griffith Observatory in LA. You can see it playing through there. And what I want to do is I want to be able to add in some text. But to make it a little bit more funky and interesting, I want the text to come from behind the building. And how we go about doing that is we create an image mask. And I will show you that working. Tap on this layer here, and then play it through. And you can see now the text comes from behind. But the way we sell it is that you can see just on the sort of upper deck of the observatory, people moving back and forward. It's quite subtle, but it's there. You can see if I just scrub back and forward. And then the mask appears just for the duration of the text appearing. And then the time lapse continues. So the mask just makes it look as if nobody was walking past at that point. It only lasts for just over 13 frames or half a second, 13 frames. And then you're just on to the text. And then I've just got a transition at the end that makes the text go out the other side. I'll show you, I've put the mask here on this layer so you can see it, that's the mask itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a screenshot, cut it out using an application called, or app called Art Studio Pro, and I'll explain why I use that over Photoshop for iPad. And then we bring that back in and do all the rest of the little tweaks that we need to do to make this mask work for you. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is identify point in the video that we want to use for the actual image mask. And the cool thing about using image masks over the likes of a green screen mask is that it blends in absolutely perfectly with the original video if you do it right. So what I'm doing is I'm just scanning along and I want to just find a bit of a clip whereby there's nobody going past up here on the upper deck and that looks like a good point there so what we have to do is export and then press snapshot this will make an image for us which we can then use for actually masking and then we can just play the clip through and just check if there was anything else now sometimes i mean i'm obviously doing this by making the clip empty sometimes you might have to do it by the brightness the color there's various reasons you would want to pick a point in the clip, but you'll know yourself the sort of sweet spot that you want to go for that makes the clip sell and then you can use it um, for a mask. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the image that we've just snapshotted and bring it into Art Studio Pro. Now, if you've never seen Art Studio bef uh, Pro before, this is actually, I think, version 3. It literally um, dropped, a, the guys that make it, Lucky Clan, literally dropped an update last night. And it's probably closer to using Photoshop on the iPad than actually using Photoshop on the iPad. And I'm beginning to like Photoshop for the iPad. It has some real advantages to it, but it also has a load of disadvantages. One of which is using the polygonal lasso tool. It just doesn't have that tool at the moment. They will probably bring it in eventually, but for now I'm using Art Studio Pro for this. So I'm going to go File, New, and then from Photos, and then go in a screenshot or open the screenshot like so. And then what I want to do is zoom in. Get a nice good zoom in point. And then I want to cut out the building. So I like using the polygonal lasso tool. Now obviously you could use the eraser tool and just erase away the background. You could mask it and then work from there. There's numerous ways of doing it. I just like to make a selection using the polygonal lasso tool because it's nice and neat. And you'll see when we zoom back out from it, it makes for a good selection. I'm just going to tap along. You'll see if you make a mistake like that, you just have to tap on the undo arrow. Sometimes when you're moving, you accidentally make a selection. It's perfectly normal.
Okay, so I've got the selection made. Now you'll notice there's a couple of guides I've drawn out as well. A little tip for you. It's just a little quirk of Art Studio Pro in that if I come away from my polygonal lasso tool just now, it will literally make the whole selection disappear. So I'll remove those guides in a little second. So first of all, it's just a case of doing edit copy and then edit paste. And then that has made the selection for me. I can then deselect, select, deselect. It's just like Photoshop, which is really, really handy. Another good thing that they've done in this update is the fact that there's now floating panels. Again, making it more like Photoshop, whereas in the last version, you had to pull the panel down from here and it would just sort of float at the top right. It was a little bit frustrating sometimes. So I'm just going to go to the Move tool and I'm just going to tuck those out of the way. Then all I've got to do is We'll just call this layer mask. So, and then I will delete the layer below. Don't need it any longer. And we've got our mask there. And then all we have to do with this is file, click export to PNG. And that's it. Done. So we can then go find this image in our photos um, app back in LumaFusion and bring it in and use it in LumaFusion. Okay, now that we're back in LumaFusion, I'm in the photos app and then I just go to all photos or you can go to recent and then you can select your mask. So we just want to drag and drop it roughly where we want to place it. And you'll see it just looks exactly how it should be. And then if I just zoom in a little bit, all I want to do is reduce it down to around about a second to start with. I'm then going to move it up one um, layer. And I'm also going to just unlink it. You can see you get movement before, stops for a second, and then movement afterwards. So what we want to do now is we want to drop in some text. So we'll go to titles. Now I have already created a new title. I can find it. There we go. Called LE. So we'll just drag and drop that in. Like so. And there's the title. And it's in the correct position. We'll just take a look at that a wee second just to kind of show you this. Go to the title itself. And then open it up. Capacity is obviously 100%, size is 357, and all I've done is aligned it with the horizon. And then it's a white color, and the font I'm using is Helvetica. So just a straightforward font. And we've got our final position here. And what we have to do is we obviously have to animate the text coming in. And the way we go about doing that is if we just shrink it down a little bit to start with. Maybe start at about probably two seconds. What we want to do is go back in and to the controls for size and position. And you want to draw out a point where things are going to happen. So I'm thinking around about half a second should be fast enough for the text to appear. So this is the final position that you're doing first. Click size and position. You then go to the first position. You can also tap that there and I'll take you right to the very beginning. You then want to play with the X. I always get these mixed up. The X position and just tuck it out of the way like so, and then when you play it through, it should just come in really reasonably fast, which it has done. So from here, that's how it looks. Now, because this is literally only half a second, you only need to keep the mask frame one frame above half a second just to cover yourself so that the text actually has time to pop out. And if we just play it through, like so, 
got your image mask revealing the text and if we just play it on from there you've still got the time lapse working on the observatory as well as on the clouds and if you want to all you have to do is extend however long you want the text up here and then one other thing that you can do which is a little bit counterintuitive but we'll go through it anyway is go to the slides now you would think you would slide right but when you're positioning a transition at the end you actually have to do the opposite which is slide left go right whereas if you slide right you'll actually go back in the way and i'm just going to zoom in a little bit more decrease the speed so that it's faster or rather speed things up i should say but decrease the size of the transition like so now we'll just play it through if you wanted to you could add a whoosh sound effect at this point whoosh and it appears and then whoosh for it disappearing you get the idea um, i'm not going to go into that at this stage but that's how you use an image mask now if again just highlight that i'll make a copy of it stretch it out and just place it down on my main timeline for a second or two you can see the actual mask there and it seamlessly blends in so it's a really cool way of being able to mask um, a specific portion of the image now there are some rules i should say to this working which is you need to have a static shot if the shot's moving you're going to have to motion track it and it gets really really complicated it's not impossible but it does get complicated whereas with this it's a static shot it's an opener it allows you to have a little bit of a different dynamic in terms of presenting a title and then you would cut to your next scene so you've got to have the shot locked off and static and just allow the movement to actually happen from within the frame so time lapses are brilliant for this kind of thing um, or moving traffic you need some kind of element of movement whether it be trees moving flowers moving people walking by that kind of thing but it's best used um, for the greatest effect with the actual um, time lapse itself so there you go that's how you create an image mask in luma fusion with a little bit of help from art studio pro you can of course do this in um the likes of affinity photo you can do it in procreate you can also do it in um, photoshop for ipad itself but you would need to use another tool and you would need to use a masking option what photoshop might be able to do for you which i haven't actually exper experimented with is obviously making a better selection of an object so if you have maybe an actual subject model male female whatever standing still in the frame and movement going on around them then you would be able to probably mask them out really really well in photoshop or ipad um, compared to other apps so use the app that best suits you for actually making the image mask itself and then bring it back into LumaFusion to composite it together and i'll catch you on the next video